welcome everyone those who've just tried to get into my facebook live and have had trouble with the sound i hope that this works better and it may well be the way forward in future weeks welcome to evening worship 20th of june 2021 and I'm going to begin with our opening hymn. My apologies that during that 
or you could see with me and that's simply because of the speed with which I had to move from Facebook live into setting up fairly quickly the uh, YouTube if I, if I am pursuing YouTube in the future it will be better than that let's pray life-giving father in love you made the world and all it contains all that is visible and invisible understood and unknown you have placed us human so as to unlock its secrets and yet to care for its well-being you have gifted us with intelligence and curiosity imagination and compassion and given us responsibility to steward all you have made for your gifts to us we praise and we adore you Lord Jesus Christ in love you came to our world sharing our form and living our experience both the best and the worst you brought grace to the unloved and truth to the seekers revealing the heart of the father to a love droughted world your patience enfolded the excluded and the excluder your mercy embraced the arms of the cross bleaching the stains of our lives in forgiveness and entrusting us with the good news of new life for your gifts to us we praise and adore you restless spirit in love you moved over chaos at creation filled the emptiness and moulding the shapeless giving reality to the word the father spoke in the darkness you pulse our lifetime breath after breath you hold blow history on its voyage you charge the church for its mission you make and make again and again renewing the earth rebirthing our hope never allowing darkness and death to have the last word for your gifts to us we praise and adore you and when we misuse your creation using your gifts for our own ends taking the easy road turning from our vocation of care holy god have mercy when we forget your grace making acceptance our right using truth as a weapon turning from our vocation of love holy god have mercy when we forget your life seeking ease in our comfort resisting change and movement turning from our vocation of hope holy god have mercy holy god in your mercy forgive us when we fail you inspire us when we doubt you and empower us as we serve you for we ask this in the name of jesus messiah and lord and we read from scripture from habakkuk chapter 1 verses 1 to 11 and as i said in the zoom worship this morning 
how many of us go to bed of a night reading Habakkuk? Not one of the most popular books in the Bible. But here we have a passage in two parts. The first part being Habakkuk complaining. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Or cry out to you, violence. But you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralysed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. And pausing at that point we read those pa passages or those verses 1 to 4 and we recognise that in them is a world not too dissimilar to the world that we occupy today. For as Habakkuk looked round and reflected many of the thoughts of the people of Israel at the time, what does he see? He sees violence, injustice, inequality. And he asks, how long must it be like this? I suspect that if you're like me, and many of you will be, you look at the world around us and you see violence. Just here in the locality, stabbings. We hear of gang war warfare on the streets of London and many of our cities. We hear of neighbourly arguments. We see violence. We see injustice as we see certain sections of society being attacked just simply for who they are. And not necessarily attacked physically, but kept down, kept in their place, is how the world would put it. We see inequality, the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. And just like the Israelites, we ask, how long is it going to be like this? And the trouble is, as you look back through history, we see it's so often been like this. Violence yielding power. Injustice keeping sections of society in their place. Hence the current crisis under the title Black Lives Matter as we reflect back on how slavery and its injustice and its inequality affected the society that we're still living in. It's always been thus. But why? Because throughout history we've had times, and I suspect we're in one now, where God is increasingly marginalised. When I first came into ministry, I was able to do school assemblies, 20 minutes and a Christian prayer without a problem. In fact, it was expected. Now, 30 years later, I've got to be very careful with my words. I pick them carefully so as not to offend anyone. And the prayers, more often than not, 
more generalized. And we think of the words of Psalm 119 and Psalm 126 and other Psalms, which are basically about saying, God, it's time to act. It's time to do something about this. And we echo that so often in our frustration and in our prayers. And then the second part of that passage, verses 5 to 11, entitled, The Lord's Answer. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people, who sweep across the whole earth to see dwellings not their own. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honour. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong, and their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping to devour. They all come intent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. By building earthen ramps they catch, capture them, and then they sweep past like the wind and go on, guilty people whose own strength is their God. God is going to do something amazing in their lifetime. He declares but it's not what they expect for God raises up his enemies the enemies of Israel and use, uses them to subdue and to curtail the Israelites to bring them into order if you like and that would be an amazing thing to hear and not what they would want to hear. For they would want God to wipe out all enemies. They would want God to bring order to their nation in that way. But God often works in surprising ways. He brings about his natural order in surprising ways. And here... Habakkuk prophesies that God is going to do something amazing but not what they expect. And you know I truly believe that God has done something amazing in the year since. Not just for the people of Habakkuk's time but for us today also. God interfered. And I love the way he interferes in the world, in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who was seen in many ways by the Pharisees, by the religious leaders, by the Romans, as an enemy because he came and spoke differently. And they took him to the cross. And they killed him. And in that killing, in that crucifixion, he was a blessing to the people of Israel. And over the generations since, he's been a blessing to the world. Just this week, someone wrote to me, they've been reading the Ten Commandments. And they were amazed at what it seems in the, the message 
that they said they were amazed that the Ten Commandments so much reflected the way we live our life today, the, work, the law of the land. And I had to write back and say, well, actually, the law of the land is based upon the development of the Ten Commandments. A blessing to us. And I just wonder, are we amazed at what God has done in Jesus? Are we overcome with that? Does it really astound us? Or do we just take it for granted? And not fully ascribe to God that he's come and he's done something wonderful and something amazing. Because when we do ascribe and give God the credit, then we realise that what he's done is a blessing. Not only to us, but to a blessing around us. And then it's up to us to share that blessing with other people. When people are down, depressed, anxious, worried over the whole COVID situation and the very nervous coming out of lockdown, will it happen, won't it happen? We bring the blessing of Jesus as we remind forth that even in the difficulties, God is present. And God will do something new and will be a blessing. Habakkuk is not an easy read. And the people of Israel must have received his words with fear and with trepidation. But we receive similar words in the light of all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. So we can be a blessing to the world. We can be the light that he brings. Amen. And let's turn to prayer again. As members of God's family, we pray together to our Heavenly Father that as members of the Church of God, we may show His likeness by doing His will. That those who come to join us in our worship and fellowship may find among us God's beauty and truth, open-hearted, loving and a unity of purpose. That as members of the human race, we may work together, share resources, respect and learn from one another and that leaders may inspire collective good, and those with vision be valued and heard, that we may give both support and space to those we love and nurture, that those of our own families who do not yet know God may come to understand the depth of his love for them, that all who come to Jesus in need may find in him forgiveness, healing and wholeness of body, mind and spirit, strength to cope with their difficulties and a constant inner renewing. That as those coming to death to all up the tents of their earthly existence, they may be welcomed into the eternal home that prepared for them by their lo loving God. And for ourselves, that as we marvel at the generosity of God's love and God's acceptance of us, 
we may grow closer to his likeness each day we live. Father, let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I invite you to say with me the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to read the words of our closing hymn. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. All the world's tempestuous sea. Guard us, guide us, keep us, feed us. For we have no help but thee. Yet possessing every blessing, if our God our guide shall be. Saviour, breathe forgiveness o'er us. All our weakness thou dost know. Thou didst tread this earth before us. Thou didst feel its keenest war. Lone and dreary, faint and weary, through the desert thou didst go. Spirit of our God descending, fill our hearts with heavenly joy. Love with every passion blending, pleasure that can never cloy. Thus provided, pardoned, guided, nothing can our peace destroy. in our hopes and in our dreams, the blessing of God. In our actions and in our words, the blessing of God. In our complaints and in our longings, the blessing of God. In our work and in our rest, the blessing of God. In our joy and in our sorrow, the blessing of God. In our living and in our departing, the blessing of God. <coughs> and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Good night.